Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of the Automotive News Roundup and for this particular pick it's a very interesting new category of motorsport that we're talking about which some of you have probably already seen but others could have easily missed and that is the ETCR, an all-electric touring car series. Now these vehicles are going to be significantly more powerful than a normal touring car. They're rated at 670 horsepower. They're using a standardized drivetrain and battery, a Williams-developed battery, incidentally. They're actually recharged using hydrogen, which can fully charge the car in about an hour. And even when it comes to shipping the vehicles between events, they're trying to be more environmentally conscious. They're actually shipping the cars by sea rather than air because it puts out less than 1% of the emissions that a plane does. And as far as the actual competition itself, we've got at least three major manufacturers who have already confirmed that they are gonna be in it. We've got Cupra, of course, the more performance-oriented brand of Seat, Hyundai, and Alfa Romeo, which is a pretty cool little lineup. I wouldn't be surprised if Jaguar maybe got into this. They've certainly been experimenting with some electric touring car kind of stuff, even at Goodwood last year. And speaking of Goodwood, these cars are going to be featured prominently at the 2020 Festival of Speed, but I am very curious to see whether or not the, let's say, sickness that we can't discuss because of demonetization is going to affect the festival, because over the course of the weekend, there's like a quarter of a million people who attend the event in very close quarters to each other. And although Britain isn't taking things as seriously as other countries are right now, I would be interested to see if it's going to affect Goodwood. It's a pretty high-profile event, as I said, so we'll have to wait and see on that side of things. I actually haven't ordered my ticket yet, so I don't really want to order a ticket just to get it refunded perhaps later on. But as far as these vehicles go, I want to read some of the official planning from the Goodwood website itself, and I'm actually going to link it down below if you want to read it yourself as well. And to quote directly from the website... Each of the five expected manufacturers will enter three drivers, and a random draw ahead of the event will split the field into battle groups. The first chosen driver will receive the pick of starting position, with all starting in motocross style, waiting for the gate to drop. By process of elimination, the winners will progress through to the top groups of battle two, while the remainders will square up against each other in subsequent rounds. The whittling down will continue until a grand final supported by B and C finals. The grand final winner will be dubbed the king or queen of the weekend. Drivers will earn an increasing number of points at every stage except battle three, in which a single car time lap will determine first choice of starting position in the final. The pits will be known as the hot zone, while finished cars are taken to the energy station, an interactive zone where fans can get up close and personal with the recharging vehicles. With the ongoing climate crisis, it's important to note that these cars will be charged by, as I said earlier on, hydrogen generators, which are both sustainable and suited to the rapid fire racing, allowing a 90% charge from 10% in just one hour. And when the championship kicks off in 2021, the calendar will be organized to allow cars and equipment, also as I mentioned, to be transported around the world by sea freight, which creates 1% of the environmental impact of air freight. And according to that same article on the Goodwood website, each of the events is going to be approximately 10 kilometers or so long. So it's an interesting challenge, an interesting series. And the fact that these cars are so powerful will mean, that, of course, you're not going to be wanting for performance. They're going to be very quick, probably a little bit heavier than a traditional touring car due to the battery packs. And with the manufacturers that are already entering, it's going to be some interesting uh, competition between them. Hyundai, for instance, you wouldn't typically think of, or at least I wouldn't, in the touring car sphere. I would often think of them as more of a rally derived company. Alfa Romeo, of course, has extensive DTM experience. Cupra is, you could say, the newest contender in this kind of field, being, you know, a derivative of Say It, as they are. And over time, there will probably be one or two extra manufacturers who are keen to get involved. It wouldn't surprise me, for instance, if somebody like BMW even tried to get into this kind of thing. They've shown a propensity for at least semi-electric vehicles in the past, like the i3s, the i8s, that kind of hybrid stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me if they went all in. Maybe even a Volkswagen. I could imagine an ID race car. I mean, they did well at Pikes Peak, so why not try their hand at this as well? So as far as the future, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. But I personally am pretty interested in in this, it's actually a form of touring car racing which is interesting me a lot more actually 
than I have been for many years. The last time, in fact, that I was interested in touring car racing was technically at an age where I couldn't remember it because I was too young. But looking back, I would say probably the DTM era of the 90s, especially like the earlier 90s with the Alpha 155s and that kind of stuff. So this, to me, is an interesting new development. Not a too surprising one, because, of course, that's the way motorsport is going. Formula E, now touring cars with electric power as well. So ultimately, we'll have to see how it goes, see what new manufacturers maybe come along, and how the events themselves shape up. But ultimately, that's it for this news piece. Of course, stick around on the channel for more. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.